to this webinar on requirements engineering in automotive spice. My name is Christoph Ebert and I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services. I will lead you through this program. The idea behind this tutorial is to give you some insight into practical guidance of how to apply automotive spice in the real context and we explain it from the background of our own project experiences. So what exactly is good enough requirements engineering? Why do we select this topic? Well, requirements engineering is actually one of the top three typical failure points in any project. We have project management, we have configuration management, we have requirements engineering. And for that reason, let us look into what is good enough requirements engineering. Now, simply speaking, a major topic of requirements engineering in most business is to understand what we have to do. And what we have to do can be explained by a perspective of the external view. This is a system as the user will see it or as an OEM will see it when it uh, looks into the different components <coughs> versus the underlying software or component development. And this relationship, what we also call the allocation of the requirement to a specific software component, that's the most critical because often we lose this connection, or as we call it, this traceability. So let us look into why ASPICE here helps us. But maybe I start with a simple example. Is if in school a teacher would ask the pupils to do some homework. This is what we call a requirement. If one of them would deliver a really good result, however failing to address one of the initial requirements of this teacher, he can be as perfect as he wants on the, what we call here, software side, that means on the implementation, it will not be a good result because he failed to address the requirements. And it's the same in real world. So ASPICE, with the different activities which we have along the life cycle, looks very much into how do we connect from the initial system requirements, which we analyze, to software requirements. And what I think is also very important from a practical perspective, which is how do we test later on. We see in this V-model, the horizontal abstraction is always how a specific requirement on the left side would be tested on the right side. It means on the system level, we have qualification. On the software requirements, we have the software qualification. And below, when we implement software or hardware or mechanics, we have the respective unit verification. Each one has its relationship. Good enough requirements engineering should have a test-oriented perspective. In Vector, we call it test-oriented requirements engineering. That means we look from the beginning that the test case would be available or vice versa. If we have a requirement, we look that the requirement is testable. This is what we call test-oriented requirements engineering. In the best possible case, a single requirement serves as the initial straight ahead or sunny day test case. That means if we go to a requirements tool, we could have the requirement immediately as a test case, which facilitates a regression test strategy because then we have at least a very simple functional coverage. Now from perspective of what are the expected results in ASPICE, we see here a set of very simple good enough requirements topics. One is that we need to set up a system requirements list. We have to categorize the requirements and we have to analyze the requirements. We have to look on their impact. Impact means how do they relate to other requirements, how do they relate to existing functionality or to a platform. We have to make a prioritization. Often I hear in practice priorities will not work. Well, in fact, they work because if we don't prioritize in a top-down perspective, in a conscious perspective, there will be a bottom-up prioritization. The simple reason behind is, if engineers run out of time, they will do some sort of prioritization. So it is better to prioritize from the beginning and assume what could be the criticality of the requirements and prioritize them. We need updated requirements. 
Requirements change. To our experience, some 3 to 5 percent per month along budget, we have requirements changes which we have to update. So the modifiability of requirements is very important. Then we need a bidirectional traceability. That is, if there is a change, we have to make also some consistency with the related work products. And finally, we have of course also to see cost evaluation in terms of effort and we should not the least make them well understandable, well communicated. This is why we use a tool, here very simple Excel, but of course we recommend professional tools because that helps also with exchange of requirements. Now what is a good requirement itself? A requirement should follow a very simple template structure. The template structure says it starts with an entry condition, then we talk about what is the system or component or product which we uh, want to specify, then what it shall do as a constraint, then the output and some exit condition. Or as an example, when activating the dashboard button, I press some button, the program shall present the status overview. The entry condition would be I press a button, the exit condition would be there's a status overview. This is the way how we specify requirements, how we specify services and what we recommend to write the requirements. Obviously, this is the top level of a requirement. Below it, there can be more details, technical details, decision tables, some uh, relationships with uh, UML diagrams, but the top level of each single requirement should follow this structure. Now, if we look into some of the requirements in terms of what do we expect from requirements is completeness with respect to making sure that we cover all the relevant topics, verifiability or testability, that we have a good picture in terms of can we test the requirement, and ambiguousness, that means that we are precise with the requirement. For instance, if we say a bad requirement with respect to completeness would be the user shall not be able to reject the warning message within the first seconds as opposed to specified in a measurable way. Now this would also mean it's testable. Sometimes we see requirements where people would say it has to be reliable with 100%, it has to work in all situations. The word all should be completely avoided in the requirement because we are never able to handle all situations. This is why we look very much into being more precise with the requirements or for instance here to verify the sense of lifetime of 10 years we make a proxy with thousand times being uh, switched on off. These are the kind of things which makes it measurable, which makes it testable and which ensures we can really implement the requirement. So be very careful not to be ambiguous like using words like should, could, sometimes and or all these things which we use in our daily language are very difficult because we don't know really is it left or is it right. Now this being said one recommendation is use a tool. Easily requirements get very complex in number but also in dependencies. Think your software has versions, the software has variants and with each of these dependencies, it's more and more difficult to maintain. Then think about things like type approval. Type approval means that we have a, condition, that we have a connection from a legal requirement like a UNECE regulation, say the R48, which is for the um, headlights of a vehicle, into how is it implemented. This kind of relationship means that we need a lot of traceability from the legal requirement to the software item. And this means we strongly recommend a tool which allows uh, good navigation, filtering and a status tracking including all the versioning and the variant management. With this short summary I have shown how to establish a good enough requirements engineering. To summarize we have spoken about allocation of requirements from a product or system level to the specific software. We have looked into a good template structure. We have looked into how do I specify a requirement that it is testable. I underlined test-oriented requirements engineering, which facilitates a much easier regression test strategy. And we have looked into the need 
for a tool in order to maintain the complexity of requirements. This fulfills the ASPICE needs and with this being said, I wish you a very good success with your requirements engineering. Obviously, we don't do requirements engineering for the sake of ASPICE. ASPICE is a collection of good practice. So when we talk here about requirements engineering, it's for your benefit, it's for your customer's benefit and that makes your business better. So we wish you good success. If you have questions on this or similar topics, just contact us www.vector.com/consulting. Thank you and see you next.